Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. We're on Hornby Island. If you are a wildlife photographer, this episode is for you. It is springtime and thousands, if not millions of herring are coming to the shores of Eastern Vancouver Island to go ahead and lay eggs for the next generation. This spawn event is a vital part of the marine food web, triggering a feeding frenzy for a wide range of predators. Birds by the thousands, eagles by the hundreds, and marine mammals like sea lions and otters. Here's a small sample of the photos that I captured. I'll be going over my photography settings and tips. So join me on this adventure. I'm excited to get started. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. signs of the spawn. See that color? So we just arrived at this location. I'm on Hornby and the tide's coming in. There is, uh, I don't know if you can see it on this camera. I'm using my iPhone right now because it's raining quite a bit. Uh, but we've got some bait balls over here and we've got a whole bunch of seagull action over here and uh, so we just parked at our campground and I decided okay I need to set up a little plastic bag here for protection over my camera so there's sea lions and then there's plenty of eagles and seagulls obviously everywhere and they'll like cluster in an area where they see I guess a bait ball of herring so anyways I'm gonna set I'm all set up, I'm gonna try and see if I can capture some stuff. I've got an hour and a half or so before sunset and it's really gray, not the best conditions, but this is all supposed to blow over and be really nice uh, over the next few days while we're here, so very exciting. Hiding behind this rock right here. The tide is coming in. It's supposed to come up another, I think, foot. So I won't be able to stay here for, for long, but I'm just trying to get away from the wind a little bit. Now, in probably about 10 minutes, I'll have to move regardless, just because waves are gonna hit this rock and then gonna splash up and I don't really want salt. Now there were times where the wind died down enough and the rain kind of started moving in as showers. I got some what I think are clear shots of some of the action of the seagulls diving, some of them actually catching some of the herring and flying off. Now I was surprised not to see any whales during our time, even in the rain I was looking and the sea lions were always in the water. So I didn't get any of these cool shots where they're laying around or even jumping from the rocks. Instead, I got shots like this where you just get their heads or they're splashing around. But all in all, it was a fun start to the trip. I'm on the steps that lead down to the beach right now. And check it out, there's like bait balls right there with sea lions and I haven't seen the eagle in a little while. There's a few eagles but it's all around me. It's amazing. There's probably about two dozen sea lions over here. There's a harbor seal right down there. I don't know if you can see him swimming. Uh, anyways, a lot of fun. A lot of wildlife. It was so windy and rainy when we arrived, so I did the best I could, kind of really <laughs> nailing the tarp all the way to the ground. And uh, the good thing is 
all this rain was going to pass, everything was going to clear, and the rest of our stay was going to be beautiful and sunny. Morning, everyone. Sun has come up. It's not pouring down with rain. It is a lovely day today. Cold, but a good day. There's actually an eagle up in this tree, just at the very top here. And I think it's because we uh, fried up some eggs, and so it smelled the eggs, because as soon as we did that, he came and landed right here. Now it might have been the eggs, but it could have been my kid. Small enough for an eagle to pick up, so I was keeping a watchful eye. Uh, and then there's a lot of uh, action kind of just out in the ocean. Um, it's quite calm as opposed to uh, yesterday. It was really, really windy. Uh, but we got some sea lions out there. Some of them even got their fins kind of up and out of the water. Uh, and we got a whole bunch of harbor seals. There's a blue heron. Yeah, there's a lot of fun action. We're driving around Hornby Island looking for the herring spawn. And so, how you know that there's a herring spawn that's actually happening and going down, uh, you're, we're looking for, well, one, birds, lots and lots of birds. And then if you're really far away, you can hear like um, sea lions, like the California sea lions, they do the or, 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 and they can throw their, their, uh, their voice really, really far. Okay, now let's back up for a minute and explain why thousands of birds are coming here along with hundreds of eagles and sea lions. Well, the herring are a type of small oily fish. They are found in the shallow, temperate waters of North Atlantic and North Pacific Oceans. Herring are highly abundant and play a significant role in marine ecosystems as both predator and prey. These fish have a slender, streamlined bodies with silvery scales and deeply forked tails. They typically feed on small fish and plankton. Herring are known for their large spawning gatherings, which is why I'm here. Herring spawning typically occurs during the spring months, usually from February to April, although the exact timing can vary depending on environmental factors such as water temperature and weather conditions, usually March is a great time to come. These gatherings where the herring release their sperm and eggs can be so dense that they're visible from the air and can cover large areas of the ocean's surface. Now, unlike salmon, these guys can come back and spawn multiple times. Typically, they last about eight years on average, and the standard length is about 26 centimeters for these beautiful little fish. One female herring can lay around 20,000 eggs, and in one cubic meter, there can be six million eggs. You can see them here, they're really, really small, but there are thousands and thousands of them. So it's not a big spawn that's right here, uh, but it's definitely enough to bring in stellar and California sea lions. We're now starting to get some seabirds coming in and we saw an eagle fly over. Oh, they are off the point. Okay, I'm just filming and photographing them as low to the water as I can. It was pretty tricky coming down here, up that way. And there was a river otter just over here. There's a couple of them. Very cool.
Now this is a river otter and I find them super striking, very handsome to photograph. And here it is in color and I put it into black and white. Let me know down in the comments which one you like more. I think there's a clear winner here, but I'm interested to hear what you think. Now that is one way to spread your scent. Man, it stunk. Now these guys were always my favorite to watch at the zoo. They're super playful. And he saw my lens and he, and he got really curious. So he decided to swim closer towards me and I filmed the whole thing, didn't take any photos, but I really enjoyed just seeing this guy swimming around, catching fish. Got a workshop, actually I got a few workshops. If you wanna join me and another professional photographer, we're gonna be photographing here on Vancouver Island, giant trees, waterfalls, some waterfalls cascading into the ocean. And uh, we're gonna be learning composition and uh, it's very exciting. I have other workshops uh, that are happening too. So where should they go? Go to madshannon.ca slash workshops if you wanna more information and to sign up. How many spots are available on that one? Oh, so the one on Vancouver Island, I think I only got a couple spots left. So email me if you're not sure about any of the details, how to get here, that sort of thing. It will be pretty cool. Oh, they're all shimmery and shiny silver on their side. I gotta put my polarizer. See all the fish in there? Thank you, iPhone. That is stunning. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice little spot you got there. So let's talk gear. What am I using to photograph this, this whole event? Now, I brought basically every lens I own just because I'm car camping. Uh, I've got the 24 to 70, and with this I'm taking more landscape shots. And the thread size, I think it's a 77 mil. So I've got a polarizer I can put on the end here and that'll cut away a lot of the reflection that I see. So I've got that as well as uh, the 70 to 200. So this one I've used a lot trying to capture some of the, the row, the fish eggs. And I've got a polarizer that I put on the front here so this polarizer cut away a whole bunch of the glare, especially from the kelp. After the tide went down, it was still quite wet and I could see all of those little eggs. Um, I also tried photographing sea lions, the, the river otter with using this lens and a polarizer. Now this polarizer is from Lee Filters. I'll have a link down in the description for all the different filters and lenses that I use. Now, to be able to capture the spawn, some of the best shots are from the sky. When you're looking out of the water like this, there's so much reflection that's on the water that you can't actually see the color, can't look right down into the water, especially when you see the sea lions coming in and out of all the milk that's, that's out there. So what is very important is one to have a drone so the drone that i'm using is the dgi mini 3 pro and i actually have on the very end of this it's a polarizer so look at the very end here Can you see so this right here this is a polarizer that i put on the end of my drone so that when I'm up in the sky, I can cut away all that glare. Now the best time it seems to take photographs from the sky is when the sun is the highest into the sky, at least for the water. Other landscape shots, like if you're looking for that nice warm glow at sunset, that's great. But for the water, in the middle of the day, you get that really clear, beautiful glow of the spawn and some of those rich, deep colors as you're pointing directly down with the sun right behind you, pushing all that energy down into the water. 
So having filters, I think is key. Now the filters that I'm using are from Freewell. So here's the whole case right here. I've got ND filters, polarizers. And so prior to flying my drone, I'll put one of these polarizers on the front and I'll take off. So we're on the road. We were just hiking with the family and uh, so we got a report that there is a herring spawn that's happening here on this island. It's on the other side, but it shouldn't take us more than like, I think 10, 15 minutes to get to it. Uh, it happened, what, 45 minutes ago? And anyways, we're headed there now, so see what we can see. We arrived on site and saw a beautiful big spawn unfolding before our eyes. This is what we had waited days for, and this is why we came. With so many predators relying on Pacific herring, they really are foundational to the marine ecosystem. And their importance really is apparent when you see how many animals come out for the herring spawn, which makes this event a wildlife photographer's dream. At the time of this spawn, there was also a major spawn happening off Qualicum. We think that quite a lot of the wildlife was being drawn over to that location and left this location a little bit more peaceful than it has been in other years. This highly productive fish is relied upon by seabirds, sea mammals, and fish. One female may lay up to 20,000 eggs, but of these, only about two make it to maturity. After spawning, the herring do not die. They go on to spawn for many more cycles afterwards. New research indicates that it's the elders that lead the young to spawning grounds. The commercial fishery in Canada has been largely controversial. The aim is to catch females prior to the release of eggs, and then the roe is extracted and sold to overseas markets. Tragically, this leaves 90% of the herring biomass to be used for fish food and dog food. Additionally, this is the only fish that's allowed to be harvested on its spawning grounds. In 2021, the new Minister of Fisheries reduced the herring quota by 50%. This was a significant step in the right direction, and only time will tell if this is enough to protect the keystone species. Now these videos and photos are just the first half of our trip, so please subscribe and come back. I would love to see you on the next episode. So if you like this content, please give me that thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. There'll be a few other episodes here if you wanna check them out on other adventures that I've been on. And again, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you on the next episode. Ciao.